Hi everyone. Today in this video we are going to discuss about doxycycline. How this drug acts, what are the side effects, important precautions and the clinical indications of this doxycycline. What is this drug doxycycline? The suffix cycline indicates this drug belongs to the category of tetracyclines. Tetracyclines are group of compounds which are hang the four rings. So they are called as tetracyclines and among this category we have few other drugs like tetracycline as well as chlortetracycline, oxytetracycline, demiclocycline and minocycline. You can observe that all these drugs are ending with the same suffix cycline which indicates they are the tetracyclines and these tetracyclines are broad spectrum antibiotics. That means these drugs are effective against a number of bacterial infections. That's why they are called as broad spectrum antibiotics. Particularly these drugs act as bacteriostatic and they inhibit the growth of the bacteria. Now among these drugs, two drugs like doxycycline and another drug minocycline, both of these drugs are lipophilic in nature. So they can have better absorption and even they can enter into the CNS. So today in this video we are going to discuss about the doxycycline, how this drug acts in number of infections and what are the precautions we have to take when this doxycycline is going to be administered, what are the possible side effects and what is the dose of this drug. Now we have seen that doxycycline is a broad spectrum antibiotic. So this drug can be used in a variety of infections, particularly this can be used in the respiratory tract infections RTI. Particularly, it can be used to treat the pulmonary pneumonia caused by mycoplasma pneumoniae. So, this drug is used to treat the pneumonia in the lungs produced by mycoplasma species. Similarly, this drug can also be used in the rickettsial infections which may produce Rocky Mountain fever as well as typhus fever and chlamydial infections which produce uh, STD infections like urethra and rectal infections. In all these conditions, doxycycline can be used as this drug belongs to the tetracyclines. And this drug is also useful in the gram positive as well as gram negative infections. Particularly it can be used to treat the anthrax, plague and cholera infections. Even it is effective against the E. coli infections. But one of the limitation of doxycycline in these infections is the development of the resistance. That's why doxycycline is more preferred to treat the anthrax apart from the other drugs like fluoroquinolones and penicillins. Similarly, doxycycline can be used to treat the urinary tract infections UTI which are produced by Klebsiella species. And this drug is also used to treat the ophthalmic infections which are again produced by Chlamydia species. In this way, doxycycline is having a broad spectrum of activity and apart from these indications, doxycycline can also be used in the treatment of malaria. Now let us the chemical nature of the drug. So doxycycline is having a structure like this. You can see the four rings are present in the structure and it is having the hydroxyl groups at the different positions. One of the important function group is the carboxamide moiety present at the second position. How it acts? Now let us see the mechanism of doxycycline. Doxycycline acts on the protein sense within the bacteria. Bacteria will have the ribosome with 30S and 50S subunits. Normally, each amino acid present in the peptide chain is supplied through the tRNA. Now, this is the tRNA which is bringing one of the amino acid like valine and this tRNA is present as amino acyl tRNA. This amino acyl tRNA can bind to the A site according to the codon present on the mRNA and once it is bound, it can increase the length of the peptide chain on the bacteria. In this way, each amino acid is going to be added to the growing peptide chain which results in the synthesis of the proteins within the bacteria. But in presence of doxycycline, this protein synthesis within the bacteria is going to be inhibited. This doxycycline can bind to the 30S subunit within the bacterial ribosome with little activity on the 50S ribosome. Thereby it can inhibit the activity of the attachment of the tRNA. In presence of doxycycline, the A site is going to be somewhat partially inhibited. Now tRNA cannot bind to the A site within the 50S subunit, thereby protein synthesis is going to be inhibited. In this way, doxycycline inhibits the protein synthesis within the bacteria, thereby it produces a bacteriostatic activity. 
What are the precautions? One of the important precautions of doxycycline is that this drug being a broad spectrum antibiotic, it can inhibit the bacterial gut flora within the host. This bacterial gut flora is having some protective activity towards the pathological microorganisms. When this gut flora is going to be inhibited, it results in the development of super infections. So doxycycline can produce the super infections. One of such super infection is the development of Clostridium difficile infection. This organism is going to be developed within the colon which may result in the diarrhea in the patients. So this is one of the important precautions. Doxycycline can produce a diarrhea in the patients because of development of Clostridium difficile infection. This diarrhea can be controlled by co-administration of lactobacillus spores. That's why sometimes doxycycline is given along with the lactobacillus spores. And this diarrhea can also be treated symptomatically by maintaining the electrolyte balance within the host. So diarrhea is one of the important precautions that should be monitored. But when the doxycycline is used for greater than two months in the treatment, then it can lead to one of the condition Clostridium difficile associated diarrhea, commonly known as CDAD. This Clostridium difficile is one of the infection which can produce the toxins like the toxin A as well as toxin B, which may produce some inflammation resulting in the pseudomembranous colitis. This pseudomembranous colitis can result in the diarrhea in the patients. And even this Clostridium difficile can produce the hypotoxins, which may result in the pseudomembranous colitis. So this is the first precaution that should be monitored with the doxycycline when it is used for longer periods. Second important precaution is that doxycycline can affect the two important organs because it's a tetracycline. It can form complex with the calcium. So this drug can affect the teeth as well as it can affect the bones. When this drug is going to be administered, it can be deposited in the teeth as well as the bones and there it can form a complex with the calcium such that the calcium is removed from the teeth as well as bones. So when the calcium is removed from the teeth, it results in the discoloration of the teeth resulting in the yellowish discoloration and the bones are going to be demineralized resulting in the decreased bone strength. Because of these activities on the teeth as well as bones, doxycycline should not be given in the pregnant woman, particularly at the latter stage of pregnancy. This drug can reduce the fetal growth and even if this drug is not prescribed in the children less than 8 years where it can produce the discoloration of the teeth as well as demineralization of the bones. Even this drug is given in the children above 8 years but still it can reduce the growth of the teeth as well as bones in the children. So this drug should be carefully given in the children greater than 8 years whenever it is required only it should be prescribed. Third important precaution is that Doxycycline can produce some phototoxicity resulting in the skin erythema and it can increase the risk of sunburns. That's why when this drug is used for prolonged periods, the patient should not be exposed directly to the sunlight in order to avoid the photosensitive reactions. Similarly, this drug can also increase the intracranial hypertension. So in the patients who are already having raised intracranial blood pressure, this drug should be carefully used. Similarly, this drug can also increase the blood urea nitrosin. What are the side effects? One of the important set of side effects of doxycycline is the gastric upset. Generally, doxycycline can produce few of the side effects like nausea and vomiting, diarrhea. This may be due to again development of Clostridium difficile infection and it can produce anorexia, loss of appetite. Apart from these common side effects, doxycycline can produce one of the side effects Dysphasia. Dysphasia is a condition of difficulty in swallowing. Patients can perceive a pain during swallowing. Similarly, this drug can also produce one of the condition glossitis. This is the inflammation of the tongue resulting in the swelling of the tongue and it can also produce enterocolitis, inflammation of the colon resulting in the swelling at the abdomen and esophagitis where the inflammation of the esophagus which may result in the irritation of the esophagus. So all these side effects can be observed with the doxycycline because of the gastrointestinal upset. How to minimize these gastric side effects? Even we cannot prevent these gastric side effects but by careful precautions we can minimize these gastric side effects produced by doxycycline. So first one this doxycycline should be taken in the upright position 
such that we can prevent the esophagitis as well as glossitis. And second approach is that doxycycline should be taken with food because the food can minimize the gastrointestinal side effects. But at the same time, this drug should not be given with the food like milk and dairy products because milk and dairy products contain calcium which form a complex with the doxycycline resulting in the decreased absorption of the doxycycline. That's why this drug should be given with food apart from the milk and dairy products. Even this drug should not be given with the antacids and iron products because of again formation of a complex with the doxycycline. And another approach to take the plenty intake of fluids which can minimize the risk of glossitis and other gastrointestinal side effects. And multivitamin supplementation particularly with vitamin B12 may reduce the gastric side effects. Other side effects. Doxycycline produces few of the other side effects like hypersensitive reactions. Particularly this drug should be avoided in the patients who are developing allergic reactions. This drug may produce urticaria, serum sickness, anaphylaxis and skin rashes. So any serious hypersensitive reactions are observed then the drug should be avoided in order to prevent the serious hypersensitive reactions. And this drug can also produce hemolytic anemia. And another important side effect is a benign intracranial hypertension. Benign indicates it is not that much harmful. So when this drug is administered, intracranial blood pressure is somewhat raised, which again comes to the normal level when the drug is going to be stopped. Similarly, it can also produce some liver abnormalities resulting in yellowish eyes, dark urine and abdominal pain. And even it can produce a vaginitis, the vaginal infection, it can produce an yeast-like fungal infection within the vagina. How it is given? This drug is available as a tablet form as well as delayed release capsule form. In the form of tablet, doxycycline should be initiated at a dose of 100 mg twice daily. So initial daily dose is the 200 mg which is given as 100 mg morning and 100 mg at the night. The maintenance dose is somewhat reduced to 50 to 100 mg given for every 12 hours. And already we have discussed that this drug should not be given in the children less than 8 years. But in the children greater than 8 years who are having the body weight less than 45 kg, the doses can be fixed based on the body weight. So doxycycline is given at initial dose of 4.4 mg per kg which is divided as twice daily. And the maintenance dose is somewhat reduced to 50%. The maintenance dose is 2.2 mg per kg per day within the divided doses. So that's about this doxycycline. Doxycycline is one of the broad spectrum antibiotic that belongs to the group of tetracyclines. This drug is useful in the various types of infections like mycoplasma infections which produce the pulmonary pneumonia, chlamydial infections which produce the urethral and rectal infections, rickettsial infections which produce a mountain sickness, urinary tract infections produced by Klebsiella species, gram positive and gram negative infections. In all these infections, doxycycline can be used and it can also be used in the treatment of malaria. In case of malaria, the dose is 100 mg once daily. Gastrointestinal side effects are the important side effects of doxycycline and it can produce the diarrhea which may be because of super infections like Clostridium difficile infection. This drug should not be given in the children less than 8 years as well as the pregnant women because this drug can form a complex with the calcium such that it can produce the discoloration of the teeth as well as demineralization of the bones. And finally, this drug is given at a dose of 100 mg twice daily. The maintenance dose may be 50 to 100 mg given for every 12 hours. So that's for today. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Share this video with your friends, post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.